Hi. I'm happy to be back in my home in Bangkok after a seven-week trip that took me around the world. I visited my family in New York City and in uh, Pennsylvania, eastern Pennsylvania near the Pocono Mountains, lovely place in the world. I then drove from, uh, from the Poconos to Chicago on a two-day trip that you could have done in one day. I wanted to take my time and visited a couple of uh, places along the way. And then I got on an Amtrak train uh, in Chicago and took that to the West Coast. Got to ride through the Rocky Mountains. It was, uh, had some high points on the trip. I did a video about how I would not recommend the Amtrak uh, trip for a bunch of reasons, but that's already in a different video. I did get to see the Rockies, which was kind of nice. And then I flew to Manila, uh, and from Manila to Dumaguete, which was uh, where I intended to end my trip. And I left, uh, you know, the amount of time that I was going to stay in Dumaguete open because I was investigating. I wanted to see, I'd been in the Philippines before, and I kind of knew what to expect. I haven't changed a lot. Dumaguete, even prior to, uh, to his popularity with YouTubers in, in that uh, small city, uh, was kind of a hub for, for retirees, expats, Westerners who wanted to stay in the Philippines. And so I wanted to check, check out Dumaguete. And what I had in the back of my mind is to find a place uh, other than Bangkok. I love my home here in Bangkok and I'm not moving. But it, I was thinking maybe get a, you know, like a second place where I could set up a, a photography studio. I am a photographer. Anybody who's been watching my channel for any length of time knows that. And uh, while I've taken some lovely pictures of landscapes and cityscapes and things of that nature. Anybody who's watched my photography knows who my main uh, subjects are. <laughs> and I thought that uh, uh, the Philippines might offer an opportunity for me to set up a, a studio there with a, with a, in a target-rich environment. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But I've decided against it. I mean, I, I knew that the Philippines were not for me for a number of reasons uh, to live there. Uh, this, it, there are attractive parts of it. You know, the, uh, the, the, the expat community in Dumaguete is wonderful, and that's really a big attractor there. Uh, but, um, yeah, well, hey, I did a, I, 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 you know, I did a, a, a live stream video last night with my friend uh, Bill from Chiang Mai. He has a channel, Unseen uh, Thailand Chiang Mai, and uh, we did a, a live stream last night in which he asked me about Dumaguete, so I'm just going to present that to you here for, uh, for a reference of, of you know, why I don't think the Philippines is going to work, even, even, even for a temporary, you know, second home kind of thing. So, as you were saying about Dumaguete, when we broke off. Okay, I guess I should set it up for the people who, who are watching now. Is I just yeah. got back from Dumaguete, Philippines, and I, I suspect that many of the people that would be watching this, this live stream are familiar with, uh, uh, with the YouTube channels that come out of Dumaguete. Uh, Old Dog New Tricks, Mark Thornton's uh, Every Man Has a Story, uh, Justin, uh, Justin, I don't think of his last name, but he's a, he's a great big scuba diver that's on a weight loss thing, and, uh, and a handful of others. You know, there's a lot of very, very popular YouTubers there, and uh, that's part of the reason I wanted to visit uh, Dumaguete. Uh, and I enjoyed myself there, but I, I would never want to live there, not in a hundred years. I mean, and one of the things I was just describing to Bill is, uh, is I have a limited diet. I had a gout outbreak, so I had to eat vegetarian. And um, it's hard to find, you know, certain meals. Well, in this one coffee shop that's very well run, it's where all of these YouTubers hang out. It's called Ground Zero. That's a nice place. I mean, it's, it is well run and the staff is well trained. And, and you can go there at any given time of the day and meet up with these YouTube guys and, you know, and others, you know, so there's a lot of people coming and going like me and some people that are moving there. And it's, it's kind of a congenial atmosphere. So I did enjoy that. But I've been in the Philippines before and I reached the same conclusion quickly eight years ago when I was there. It's like, you know, getting consumer goods is tricky. You know, I had mm. found something on their menu that was good for me. It was a, it, it, they had these dishes with uh, with meat or, 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 or fish in them that I just told them to remove that and I, I had the vegetables and the rice and I had that twice and I, I you know I was there over the course of eight days and I went back a third time and didn't have it anymore oh sorry we don't have sorry we don't have that what do you mean? Oh, they don't have they didn't have that whole section of the menu had you know it was you know not available because of supplies and uh, 
that's an issue in the Philippines. Mm. You know, it's it's a big issue. It's a it, it's a country of islands. There's you know there's no international train where it's bringing goods in. Uh, it's the the bureaucratic ineptitude in the Philippines is it makes makes Thailand look efficient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. I, it's like it's just uh, I, I had a change of flight. Uh, I had a flight. Uh, coming back here to Bangkok on the 14th, and I purposely bought a flight that was transferable that I could change when I purchased it because I wasn't 100 percent sure of when I wanted to leave. Well, getting that done took over two hours uh, on the phone with somebody. There were yeah. no options for me on on the Philippine airline website. We're not talking about Joe's airline here. We're talking about the the you know the signature airline of the Philippines, and it was a business class ticket. So you should have you know some. Well, I finally had to get somebody on the phone. And it took over two hours to get it done. And I had to tell him what to do. He kept finding ways to say, oh, we can't do that. Sorry. You know, he's trying to end it. He's probably overworked and just looking to move on to his next problem. Yeah. But I was like, well, well, wait a minute here. It says, you know, the problem was I was flying from Dumaguete to Manila and Manila to Bangkok. And the transfer was only good for the uh, Manila to Bangkok one. And he mm -hmm. says, well, we can't we can't apply this transfer to the Dumaguete. I says, OK, apply it to the Manila to the Bangkok and sell me a new ticket. You, Dimwit. I left the dimwit part out, but that was in yeah. my head. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah, I could do that. So of course you could do it. You dimwit. Again, I didn't actually say that. But, <laughs> you know, that is so typical of everything that you encounter there. Really? And also when I just walked a little bit out of town one day, you know, I said, ah, let me take a walk, right? So uh, instead of going out my hotel, I stayed in the Bricks Hotel, which is okay. I mean, it was a you know it's a mm. decent place. So I go out of a hotel and I make a right. And you go down into the, the, the promenade area where the bars mm -hmm. and the you know, places are. It's not that impressive. This time I went left and I went into the barangay, which is Philippine for a neighborhood, right? Yeah. And it's like, it was scary. I mean, it's like, really? it's a, the pollution is horrendous. I mean, the river looked like, you know, this little stream running was clearly, uh, you know, nothing but it was raw sewage. And, and uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, it, it's grim, like really, yeah. really grim. And I don't see places. I've been in the worst neighborhoods here in Bangkok, and they're not that bad. You know, yeah. so it's just you know there's, there's a level of poverty there that's that's crushing, and you know you have to live around that if you're deciding to live there. Uh, yeah. There's beggars everywhere. I mean, there's like the little kid, you know, a little girl who couldn't have been more than eight or nine years old. She was there every day, and she'd walk right up to you and rub against your leg. She was probably looking to pickpocket you. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, so that kind of thing is present all the time, which is annoying. And um, the, uh, you know, it's like, I, and, and I think, you know, and if you go in there for the girls, I think Thai women are better looking, <laughs> frankly. You know, two things I noticed when I went to the Philippines. Because of their crap diet, they all get fat by 30. They all have a muffin top by 30. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That'll get me in trouble. Maybe somebody else should talk. <laughs> you know, the two things I noticed when I was in the Philippines, though, was stores have armed guards in front of them with, like, shotguns, yes. Yes. you know, and then, it, it, and, then, and then it's like, you know, you're talking about the poverty, but it's like you have, like, a really nice hotel, and surrounding it are all these squalors, you know, all these little metal shed, tin shed houses. It's just unbelievable, yeah. the poverty over there. You know, it's what's funny is that they, there weren't any shotguns in Dumaguete, but I, I've seen them in Manila. You'll have and the, and the guards holding them look like they're 19 years old. You know, it's like, <laughs> little sounds like Mexico with a shotgun. But we did have a guard. There are guards, you know, by the bank. The the Bricks Hotel where I was had a, a guard. He would open the door for you and everything. And he was armed. He had a pistol on mm -hmm. his hip. I became friends with a guy, uh, another guy, guy named Bill, actually. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, it's Mike. Uh, Jersey Mike, we call him, and he was a retired New Jersey state trooper, you know, so he was a cop himself, right? So he strikes up a conversation with the kid about the, about the gun, and the kid, kid oh, he, you know, starts showing him the gun. It's broken. It had no bullets in it. The barrel, it was, a, it was a revolver, and the barrel didn't spin, you know, and it's just, it's for show. It's like, I, that's dangerous. I mean, if you encounter an armed bad guy, what are you going to do, throw yeah. it at him? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's just, it, it's it, it's a strange place, the Philippines. Yeah. I couldn't want to live there. <laughs> I have no special interest in promoting Thailand as a place for retirees. I, I, I just think it's a better place to do that. It has its issues, 
One of the reasons that I'm doing a studio shoot here today rather than my normal walk and talk is because the air pollution in Bangkok right now is, is horrible. It's very high and unhealthy and I'd rather not go out, frankly. So you have issues to deal with here as well. But what you do have in Bangkok is a, uh, is, you know, a first world city with all the amenities that you might want. And yet you can find a very inexpensive way of living. Once you learn how to shop and where to shop for food and other necessities, you can get very, very cheaply. You know, the inflation that is going on in Western countries right now isn't anywhere near as bad here in Thailand. And uh, you can find a, you know, a one bedroom, a small one bedroom apartment, uh, a condominium apartment in, in a nice complex with a pool and a gym for $450 a month. So yeah, I, I just think it's a superior place. And getting in and out of Bangkok, there's two international airports that you can access by public transportation. And uh, Suvarnabhum, the largest of the two airports, it has connections you know, all over the world. You know, it's, it's, it's a great place for somebody who's retired but wants to travel, somebody like me. So yeah, you know, thumbs up for Thailand as compared to the Philippines. I don't want to disparage the Philippines too much. The people are lovely. It's just not for me. And, you know, my recommendation would be come check Thailand out. You know, while there's a bit of a language issue outside of Bangkok, I'll grant you that, that might be less in the Philippines than more English-speaking people in the provinces in the Philippines, but not all over. I mean, you know, Dumaguete, I think, is Occidental uh, Negros is their province. Uh, you know, and it's only because there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of expats in that particular city for a long, long time. So, you know, English-speaking people have gravitated there to, to sell the expats and stuff. <laughs> if you go to other provinces in the Philippines, you're, you're going to find less English speakers than you do in Dumaguete. Uh, but admittedly, there, there, you know, you will find more English speakers in the Philippines than you do in Thailand. So if that's a big issue for you, well, okay, you know, that, uh, I haven't found it to be a great big deal here in, in, uh, in Bangkok. You know, you find plenty of English speaking people. For the same reason you find a lot of English speaking people in Dumaguete. There's a lot of expats here and they want to sell you stuff. <laughs> so they learn how to speak English. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. I'll probably live here for the rest of my life, but I do intend to travel more. And uh, so if you're still here, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.